4.5 negative exponents and reciprocals. Let me write down a rule in math speak that describes what we're going to be doing here, and then I'll explain it in a little more plain English after that. So the basic rule is if you have something to a negative power, so x to the power of negative n, I can rewrite that as 1 over x to the n. If I take the reciprocal, that exponent becomes positive. It also works if I have 1 over x to the power of negative n. I'm going to take the reciprocal and change the sign of the exponent. So I can flip it back up to the top and make that exponent positive. Now I do have to point out, I do have to point out x can't equal zero because in math we can't put a zero on the bottom of a fraction. So what does that mean in simpler English? All it means is if I have a negative exponent, to change it to positive, I just take the reciprocal of the base and then I can just change the exponent to positive. This will make a little more sense when I show you some examples, so let's jump right to that. Here's a question I want to evaluate. I want to evaluate 7 to the power of negative 2. First step is I'm going to take the reciprocal of the base. So instead of it being 7, I treat it as 1 over 7. I flipped it to the bottom. And then I can rewrite that exponent as positive. 1 over 7 squared. 7 squared is 49, so I've got 1 over 49. Let's do another one. 10 thirds to the negative 3 power. First step, take the reciprocal of the base. In this case, the base is 10 thirds. So it now becomes 3 over 10. I just flipped it. And that exponent becomes a positive 3. Now when I take the power of a fraction, I take that exponent and I apply it to the numerator and to the denominator. So this becomes 3 to the power of 3 over 10 to the power of 3. 3 cubed is 27. 10 cubed is 1,000. There's my fraction. Let's do another example. Here I've got negative 3 quarters to the power of negative 3. And I put this one in there specifically because I wanted to identify an error that sometimes creeps into people's work. So the steps are exactly the same. You take the reciprocal of the base. I had negative 3 quarters, so if I flip it, it becomes negative 4 thirds. And then you rewrite the exponent as a positive. The error that people often make is they will also rewrite the base as positive. It's only the exponent that changes sign, not the base. And as far as the sign, I always like to keep that negative sign attached to the top number. Although technically it's not wrong if you'd kept it as 4 over negative 3. Let's evaluate that. Negative 4 cubed is going to give me negative 64. And 3 cubed is going to give me 27. Okay, so now let's take a look at what happens when it's a rational exponent that's negative. To be honest, the rules are still exactly the same. You start out by taking the reciprocal of the base. So 16 becomes 1 over 16. Then you can rewrite your power with a positive sign. Now be careful. This is another common place to make mistakes. I did not take the reciprocal of the exponent, just the reciprocal of the base. All I did to the exponent was rewrite it as a positive. Let's finish this off using our rules for rational exponents. The only difference here, it's all going to happen on the bottom. The power of 5 quarters, well, the denominator is a 4, so I'm looking at the fourth root of 16. And my numerator was a 5, so I'm going to take that all to the fifth power. The fourth root of 16 happens to be 2. So now I'm looking at 1 over 2 to the power of 5, and that is going to be 1 over 32. The rules still apply. You just have to remember more of them and still apply them correctly. Let's do another example. I've got 8 to the negative 2 thirds power. So before I deal with that rational exponent, I'm going to deal with the negative. Take the reciprocal of the base, becomes 1 over 8, and I'm going to take that to the 2 thirds power. 8 to the 2 thirds power, my denominator is a 3, so that's a cube root, cube root of 8. I'm going to be squaring that because the numerator of my exponent is a 2. Cube root of 8 is going to give me 2, and I still had a power of 2 up there, 1 over 2 squared, 2 squared is 4, so my end answer is 1 over 4. Let's do one more example. This one's a little more complicated. It's a fraction, it's negatives, but if we just follow our rules, work it through step by step, it'll be just fine. So to deal with the negative on the exponent, I take the reciprocal of the base. It was 64 over 125, now it's going to be 125 over 64. I always recommend you take that negative sign and just attach it to the top number. 
It doesn't matter if it's the top or the bottom or in the middle. I just find it easier to work with up there. Draw in my brackets and my exponent becomes a positive. I did not take the reciprocal of my exponent, I just rewrote it as a positive. When we are taking the power of a fraction, I'm just going to rewrite it with that exponent on the top and on the bottom. So negative 125 to the 5 thirds power over 64 to the 5 thirds power. I've got the brackets on the top one, just so we know that that negative is inside the exponent. 5 thirds, denominator is a 3, so we're going to do a third root, and we're going to take the fifth power of whatever is in that third root. Let's rewrite that. Third root of 125 is 5, so 5 cubed gives me 125, but because that's a negative, and I've got an odd root, I can take the third root of a negative number. Third root of 125 gives me minus 5, and that's still going to be the power of 5. Third root of 64 should give me 4, and that's still going to be the power of 5. And last, negative 5 to the power of 5 is negative 3,125. 4 to the power of 5 is 1,024. And that is my final answer. Just remember to follow your rules.